This week on Anya Don't Stop, we're in Malibu Beach speaking with hip hop activist and scholar Rosa Clemente. Plus, we have the RBG Boricua MC Divine on Rooftop Live. In LA recently, we had a chance to link up with our sister Rosa Clemente, a radical activist, mother, and professor who for years has been at the forefront of the struggle to unite black and Latino communities through hip hop. Rosa invited us to take in the little California sun as she shared with Claudia about the strong women that mentored her political development. My mentor, Dr. Maita Morena Vega, you know, it wasn't until I was in college and heard her speak that I even thought of myself as being racially black. And I grew up in New York and in the South Bronx and was always proud of being Puerto Rican. I mean, I didn't even speak English for the se first seven years of my life. We didn't even use the word Hispanic back then. You know, it was like you were Puerto Rican. At your age, I was wondering because I would walk into a room and people would say, "Es negra, she's black." Okay. Or I would walk into a room, "Es Latina," right? And, and but is she really Latina because she's black? Ah, no, es de Santo Domingo. Ah, no, es de Puerto Rico. No es de Panama. No es de Trinidad. When I heard her speak. For me, it was never like black being about phenotype or like what you look like physically. It was a consciousness and also part of a larger tradition. The dis dispersal of Africans throughout Latin America, the Caribbean, right, was immense. That political consciousness was raised because I heard her talking about it and she might not be phenotypically considered black. And that was in the early 90s, you know, like 20 years later, the conversation and what we do about it has so evolved. But at the end, for me, being black is a political consciousness as well. It's not just about phenotype, what you look like, where you live. Although obviously that's important as people of color under like a system that privileges white skin. But for me, it's definitely always more about a political consciousness at this level. We need people to understand this is not only a nationwide movement around police brutality. This is about the humanity of the majority of the people that reside in this world. So whether we're in LA or Puerto Rico or Brazil or France or wherever, we are being subjected to state and police violence. Black Lives Matter is not a moment, it is a growing movement of racial and social justice within a context of trying to break down white supremacy, patriarchy, and capitalism. And that's why Black Lives Matter. So like another one of my mentors, Richie Perez, would always talk about how he felt that the Young Lords Party needed to document themselves even more. And how are we portrayed in history books? So. When I came back from the UN Conference Against World Racism in 2001 from Durban, South Africa, I had done an interview on WBAI, and one of the hosts of the sh creator and host of the show Where We Live, Sally O'Brien, an Irish radical woman, called me and said, you need to do radio and document this. So I started doing radio, I fell into journalism, and from there, any kind of like organizing or activist event I was part of, I was trying to document from like a people's history perspective. And from there, I knew that I could use that skill that somebody saw in me that I would never thought I had at all to then archive our history of activism while it's happening, but to relate it back to like a specific moment in United States political social history, the black and brown power era. I've never been in a position like where I have not seen strong women all around me at any level. I've been mentored and continue to be mentored by like amazing women. The reason I even became a Black Studies major was because of a professor by the name of Dr. Vivian Gordon, and she had written a book called Black Feminism, Which Way Forward, that addressed what she called this triangular oppression, the idea of gender, class, and race. She was my professor, and she encouraged me to get into Black Studies because she told me, one day she's like, you're black. You're part of a bigger global blackness. Like I'm gonna t teach you about Pan-Africanism and what it means to be 
have a black political consciousness, but you're also, she said, you're lucky because you're bicultural. At that time, I had been elected to be president of the Black Alliance. It was called the Albany State University Black Alliance, the kind of umbrella black organization on the campus. She said, you have a perfect opportunity to bring black and Hispanics together and to do like, be a bridge builder. And she was my first heart, like mentor, professor, everything to me in that sense. So like, that's been like a constant in my life, which leads me to always, I think, be around strong women. Some folks may know you from doing different words, you know what I mean? You've been from being in the group today. Yeah. And also, you know, your relationship being RBG, like yeah. you said, People's Army, down yeah. with Dead Prez. Tell us how you got down with, with, with Dead Prez, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's how I met you. That's how we yeah, met you. yeah. My man, um, Maintain, and my man, Nimrod, you know, um, we had some things happening uptown in the Bronx. And um, and then Lord Jamal, you know, used to come through, you know? And then, um, you know, my man Ken Jay and Maine, they were cool with Lord Jay. So when when um, Lord Jamal had signed, um, got the deal with DPs at, at Loud, you know, in the beginning, you know, they was around us, you know what I'm saying? And and it went from just us just, you know, doing what we do to, to organizing, to putting our music, to just representing the whole thing. It was like, it was a part of my life that I appreciate and made me who I am today, you know what I'm saying? As far as like, you know, because I wasn't no political person, you know what I'm saying? I was just a brother from the Bronx, you know, that was cool with some political animals, you know what I'm saying? Like, M and Stick, man, that, that's like being around like, like two great martial artists, you know what I'm saying? With different styles, you know? So it's like, you know, there were certain things I felt responsible once I got the knowledge of it and, you know, and, and just being grown, man, and being healthy and all these other things that we, we put out in our music, you know, not representing the bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Not supporting, you know, what's gonna really take away from our community growing and being about something, you know? Man, one of, uh, one of the ill records I feel like that, that, that's just been out, period, and mm -hmm. it's crazy because it's like a remix, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, that's one of my personal joints, and I always tell you about it. Yeah. Is the, the the Malcolm Garvey Huey joint? Study tell Malcolm me, Garvey you know, Huey, man. How that came to be, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I hear you all over that, you know what I'm saying? That, tell me about that joint. The, that was a special joint. Malcolm Garvey Huey. Study Dedicated Malcolm to all Garvey Huey. Prestige. The life is like a movie. Study Malcolm Garvey Huey. Malcolm Garvey Huey. This the real Garvey Huey. Huey. The life is like a movie. Free movie. That really, I was on a train coming uptown, and um. And, and, and you know, the, the beam of Benz and Bentley, that, that B, you know, it's certain, when you're an MC, you hear B, sometimes you don't hear what people saying, you know what I mean, on the record. But um, all the MCs on it, you know, they, they did their thing. But I felt like, you know, I felt like it needed some substance for me, you know? I studied Malcolm Garvey Huey, Malcolm Garvey Huey, Marcel Cody with the Uzi, listening to Fela Kuti, I'm a goon with the machete, especially if it's Delhi, got the Santo for the Hexy to protect me, so respect me, this is heavy, legendary, revolutionary, my wifey, she resurrect me when they thought they had me buried, took me out the cemetery, now it's family over every, cause it's all that's necessary to avoid the commissary, I'ma live for you five, so I stop getting high, if you know then you recognize, it's that black and brown, Pride, this the power of the mind, RBG, God divine. You can see through the lies if you can read between the lines. I wrote the hook on the train and then I and then I wrote the verse. So um M was 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 gonna be in Brooklyn that weekend and I was like, yo M, I want I want you and Stick to get on this remix that I'ma do for my mixtape, or you know, or just you know some joint I wanna do, you know what I'm saying? So um so so we go to Warrior Studio in Brooklyn that still exists. You know, the, the equipment that we used to use in, when we used to record 10, 15 years ago is still in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, my man Umi got that. So yeah, I went man. to so I went to Umi's joint. I mean, I met up with M and then um and then he got on it. And then um it was like, yo, we working on a mixtape with drama. And 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 they everybody feeling that we're gonna use it for the mixtape. It, it, it's all good. I'm like, hell yeah, like. Like it's gonna do better than it is gonna be doing at the crib, you know what I'm saying? So, so it went on to be like you know, some that's joint that joint. that's like yeah, like a joint that people know and people you know like being able to perform it for people that that really live, 
you know, and really support, you know, you know, Malcolm Garvey and, and Huey P. Newton, you know what I mean? Many have tried, many have died, we live in terrible times, a heavenly mind. Wouldn't survive, they want us dead or alive, they murdering people. Police the pigs, been murdering people. And getting away, the hood should have their own Veterans Day, so many we lost. Hip hop is dead, the melody's off. They crown with thorns, then sit and pray and make the side of the cross the day I was born. The king of king paved the way to perform the shit I be on. Makes police is one the way to baton. They want me locked in state greens with straight fiends. Locked in the box for eight weeks for baked beans. Laughing at ops like homie, you only ate. Got the world thinking you out here doing the great thing The wars on the black and brown lives they taking And all them innocent people they mistaken to be They hating on me and it's blatant to see That's why the hood hate the police